Hello guys, welcome back to Straight Cam. In this video, we're going to look at a method called ICE table or ICE table. So this is a method that is quite popular in chemical equilibrium. I over here stands for initial, C stands for change, and E stands for equilibrium. Thus, the name ICE table. The method is used to determine the concentration, or if you want to find out the partial pressure of all of the reacting species at equilibrium. And to understand how we're going to use ICE table in the problem, let's jump right into the problem over here. We have a question. So what we need to look for now is we need to identify what are the information given to you by the question first. So when you read the question, the equilibrium constant is given to you, which is 4.6 exponent negative 3, okay? And the reaction is going to be involving N2O4 gas that decomposes to make NO2 gas. So we're going to write that down first. So the question gives, we have the equilibrium constant Kc, okay? So the Kc is given. The value is 4.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And then the reaction is a decomposition of N2O4 gas to make NO2, okay? So we have N2O4. It's a gas. Don't forget the phase of your reactant. Phase is important for chemical equilibrium. And then it will decompose to NO2 gas. But when you look at your chemical equation over here, it is not balanced yet. So how do you make that balance? Of course, you're going to put number two right in front over there so the basic is still the same if you compare with what we have learned at the beginning of the semester every single time when you have question like this if the question does not give you the chemical equation so you have to figure it out and so you and you have to make sure that you have a balanced equation so regardless whether you're going to have non-reversible or reversible reaction like we have over here the most important thing that you need to ensure is to have a balanced equation first that is super important okay and then we have um the mole of your reaction is given okay the question gives you the number of mole of n2o4 so that is the mole in the beginning, okay? Because it says over here, 0 0.10 mole of N2O4 is introduced. So the question uses the word introduce. So you can imagine now this problem or situation in the beginning, you have a vessel of five decimeter cubic plus over here. So at the beginning, you have an empty vessel. So what happened? You are going to be introducing N2O4 gas into here, into this vessel. And how much? 0 0.10 mole. So you're going to put that into the empty five decimeter cubic vessel. So that will be the initial concentration. From these two information, from mole and volume, if you apply your ideal gas knowledge, you do know that this gas will behave ideally. Okay, we're going to assume that it will behave ideally. So it will take the volume of your vessel. So to find out the concentration of your reactants you can just simply take this value over here mole you're going to divide by 
the volume of the vessel okay so that's another important piece of information so the volume of your reactant would be five decimeter cubic okay so when you work out that number we can get the concentration of N2O4 now initial I'm going to put uh, initial over here initial concentration okay before they're going to reach equilibrium would be zero 0 0.10 mole divide by the volume 5.0 decimeter cubic and you should be getting 0 0.02 molar so that is the initial concentration for your reactant and initially we don't have this one yet. We don't have an O2 being produced yet. Okay, so you can imagine that the initial concentration for an O2 over here would be 0, 0.0 molar. So now, what does the question wants you to find? Okay, so question gives all of this information that we're going to be using for your ICE table. But what does the question wants? So the question wants you to find the calculates the concentrations of all reacting species at equilibrium. So when you are dealing anything with equilibrium, you need to use the ICE table. So question wants you to find the concentration of N2O4. Okay, and concentration of NO2 at equilibrium so that is what the question wants so it's very good before you want to proceed to use your ice table try to examine the question try to find out what does the question wants okay and then what does the question give question gives you the value of kc in this case which is 4.6 exponent negative 3 and then we can work out the balance equation over here, which is going to be very important for your ice table later on. We will look at that one later. And then we have the information for your reactants. In the beginning, you have 0 0.10 mole being introduced into 5 decimeter cubic flask. Okay. And we have worked out the concentration. The reason why you want to have the concentration because ICE table will be working in terms of concentration or pressure. Since the questions over here are giving you KC, okay, so the value over here is for KC, therefore your ICE table, the one that we're going to be constructing now, will be for concentration. So first, we're going to write the balance equation on top, like this. Okay, so N2O4 will be for this column. And then the product will be that column over here. Okay? And then... What we're going to fill in here, the top one, you're going to write initial concentration. So remember, the concentration that we're using now is molarity. So you're going to put the 
units of concentration big M over here to signify that we're dealing with concentration now. Don't forget, if you do not have this, you might not going to get your mark. Okay, and then your change. Okay, so remember, I, C, E, and then E will be for your equilibrium. Okay. So the initial concentration that we have figured out just now for N2O4, initial concentration is 0 0.02 molar. So that's why this piece of information that is given to you is very important. So you need to know how to use them to find the initial concentration for your reactants because we're going to put that into your ice table later. And we do know that initially we do not have N2 being produced. The question does not say anything that NO2 is present in your vessel at the beginning. So we're going to assume that in the beginning we do not have NO2 inside. Okay, so the initial concentration for N2O4 would be 0 0.02, okay? And then here would be 0 0.00. We do not have that being produced in the beginning, okay? And then what about change? So change over here, change over here will depending on your stoichiometry in front of your reactant and your product. That's why it's very important for you to have this balance equation to be available for you. If you do not have this balance, it will be wrong over here because the change will be depending on the stoichiometric coefficient from the balance equation. Okay, And also don't forget your reversible arrow because right now we are dealing with a system at equilibrium. So for the change, because this one is one mole, you have one mole of N2O4 of gas, N2O4 gas, so the change would be minus x. So we do not know how much is the change right now. Okay, so that is the unknown. We do not know how much is the change. So we're going to put x. Okay, so x over here, y, y minus, because this is your reactant. And in general, reactant will be the one that will be decreasing in concentration. So that's why you have minus sign in front. It's very important for you to have this minus sign. Okay. And then for your product, you're going to have plus 2x, okay? So why do we have 2x over here? Because we have 2 mole of N2 gas being produced, okay? So now you see that balance equation is very important for your ice table. If you have the wrong coefficient here, you will get the change incorrect, okay? Why do we have to put plus sign? Plus sign over here is try to signify that your product is the one that will be increasing in concentration. So it's also important for you to show this plus sign to show that this one is increasing in concentration. If you do not have this plus sign, you will not going to get your mark for this row. Okay, you have to have this plus sign, you have to have this negative sign. Now, what about equilibrium? So to write this equilibrium is quite easy. So you're going to take 0 0.02 here, initial concentration, and you're going to minus with x. 0 0.02 minus x. And then the one over here, you're going to have zero concentration 
plus 2x. Therefore, you're going to have 2x. Okay? Because when you have 0 plus 2x, you can have 2x. So at this point, you don't have to put the sign any longer. Okay? Because this is already being worked out with whatever you have on top. For this sign over here is important because you want to show that NO2 is increasing in concentration. Now we have filled in your ice table. So that is the first, essentially the first thing you need to do. Okay, apart from finding out all of the information needed. Okay. So after you have done your analysis on the question, finding out what the question gives, what the question wants. So step one is for you to construct your ice table. And step two, what you need to do is you need to write the KC expression. Okay, we're going to write the KC expression. So the KC expression would be concentration NO2 to the power of 2 over concentration N2O4. This is very, very important for you to write. If you do not write this, you will not going to get your one mark for your KC expression. So we have learned how to write the KC expression in another video. If you have watched it and you have forgotten, it's better for you to go and rewatch that again. Okay. So next, what we need to do is we're going to plug in the value that we have over here to X into here and 0 0.02 minus X value. You have to plug in into that part of the expression. So you're going to look something like 4.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. This is the value of Kc that has been given to you in the question. And then equals to 2x to the power of 2. That and O2 concentration at equilibrium is 2, 2x. So you're just going to put it over there. Don't forget to the power of 2. Divide by 0 0.02 minus x. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we would be able to solve this mathematically to find x. When we can get the value of x, we should be able to substitute that value into your equilibrium over here. So over here, I have the value that we have written just now, okay, from the case expression. And what we need to do, we're just going to take 0 0.02 minus x to go to the other side. It's a very simple mathematics. 4.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3, 0 0.02 minus x equals to 2x to the power of 2. You're going to get 4x squared. Okay? So we can just expand this. So you're going to take 4.6 exponent negative 3 times 0 0.02 and 4.6 exponent negative 3 times negative x over here. And you would be getting nine point two times 10 to the power of negative 5, okay, 
and you have minus 4.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3 x equals to 4 x square so what we're going to do now we're going to change this into um, quadratic expression so we're going to switch for x square to the other side or we're going to bring everything to the side over here and you get something like 4x square plus because this when you go to the other side the ch the, the sign over here will change 4.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3 x and then you take this 9.2 exponent negative 5 to the other side over here then you get negative 9.2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 equals to 0 so Basically, what you have done over here is some um, very simple mathematics that you have learned even before you have reached the matriculation level. What you can do now, you can use your calculator to find out the value of x. Since you have a um, quadratic expression over here, you would be getting two value of x. Okay, so you have x1 which is 4.26 times 10 to the power of negative 3 okay and then the other value of x you would get x2 the the second value of x is negative 5.41 times 10 to the power of negative 3 now the question is which value of x do we need to take okay because we have two we have this value of x and we have x2 value of x over here so how do you decide it's very much common sense since we are dealing with concentration so in real life you cannot have negative concentration it's either you're going to have something or you do not have it, which is zero concentration. Therefore, if you look at this value and that value, you kind of can make a very good guess that x2 will be rejected. Why? Because when you take this number and then you try to substitute into here, you would get a value that will be negative. So if you take the value of negative 5.41 exponent negative 3, you would have a negative concentration at equilibrium. So that is not logical. You cannot have negative concentration. It's either you're going to have none or you're going to have something. If it's very little, it's not going to be negative anyway, okay? So what we can say here is the value of negative 5.41 exponent negative 3 will not going to be accepted, okay? Because concentration should always be positive. This is common sense okay okay so it will be not accepted therefore this is what we called rejected x the reason is because of this okay or you can write um not accepted so it's the same thing therefore
the x value is 4.26 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So we're going to take 4.26 exponent negative 3 and we will substitute that value into your equilibrium over here. So let's do that. Okay, now we have this written at equilibrium concentration of N2O4 is 0 0.02 minus X. Yes, so you have written it down here. And then at equilibrium, when you have reached equilibrium, the concentration of NO2 is 2X right now. It's no longer zero because you have produced this already. So you have 2x. So when we substitute the value, so the value just now for x is 4.26 times, times 10, negative 3. Okay. And this one is 4.26 times 10, negative 3. So you would be having for N2, O4, the concentration at equilibrium, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 2 molar. Don't forget your units. And for NO2, the concentration is 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. So now we have found the concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so that's how you're going to solve this by using the ice table. Apart from finding the concentration at equilibrium by using ICE table, there are a couple of things, other things that we can do with all of the information given. For example, we can also find the degree of dissociation of the reactant. This is another very popular, very important skill that you need to learn for chemical equilibrium. We have worked out the value of X and we have found out the concentration at equilibrium for all of the species involved. Now, if the question wants you to find out degree of dissociation, you can also do that through ICE table. And in fact, you have to do that through ICE table. Why? Because to get the degree of dissociation, we need to know the value of X over here. We need to know the value of your change, how much change is involved. We do know that from the ICE table for this equilibrium reaction here, the change is X. So to find the degree of dissociation for this question, it's simply going to be X change over here over initial concentration, which is 0 0.02 molar okay and the value of x that we have gotten from the ICE table is this over 0 0.02 molar and you should be getting something about Zero point two one three. So it do not, um, you do not put any units over here, okay? Because it will cancel out. You will cancel out your units. So that is the degree of dissociation of N two O four for this specific reaction. Okay. The truth is. Degree of dissociation is going to be 
your change over initial. Okay, so what I did just now, I take the change in concentration, divide by the initial concentration of your reactant. Because your reactant over here is the one getting dissociated to form NO2. Another thing that we can do with the information that we have got, we can try to sketch the graph of concentration versus time for N2O4 dissociated to form NO2. Okay, so we do know that time, we're always going to start from time equals to zero seconds. And concentration, always going to start from zero as well. And when you look here at initial states, the concentration for N2O4, this is the one that we have figured out from the information given in the question just now, which is 0 0.02 molar. And initially, we do not have NO2 being produced yet, okay? And after they have reached equilibrium, these are the concentrations that we're going to get. So we are dealing with equilibrium now. What we need to have to add into this axis is the line for equilibrium. So we're going to put the... So let's say this is the time at equilibrium. So you can imagine that when you exceed this line over here, you will see the curve to be hitting a plateau or it will becoming stagnant, no longer changing um, because the rates for reverse reaction and forward reaction is the same. Okay, so we're going to start with the easiest one. Let's say um, N2O4 starts from 0 0.02. So N2O4, let's say 0 0.02 is right over here. I'm just going to put there 0 0.02. Concentration is in terms of molarity. Okay, so it will go down to from 0 0.02, you have 1.6 there. So it will reduce to somewhere around maybe maybe around here or there. So it will go down like this and it will start to go flat. So over here, it will be 1.6 times 10 negative 1.6 times 10 negative 2. And for NO2, you start from 0 there, and it will go up to that. So they're going to go do like this, and they're going to start to go flat around that area. So that should be about 8.5 times 10, negative 3. Okay, so the sketching is roughly going to be looking like this. So when you reach the equilibrium line here, you're going to start to see the concentration will be constant for N2O4. I forgot to, we have to label this as N. 204 and the yellow one would be NO2. Now let's have a look at another example over here. This now we have looked at the question for us to find the equilibrium concentration, but this time let's try to find the partial pressure at equilibrium. So for this one, the balance equation is already provided to you. 
So that one should be um, easier for us to deal with this. But it's good for you to make sure that this equation over here is truly balanced. And when you have looked, yes, this one is already balanced and you're ready to use this one for your ICE table. And as usual, it's better for you to identify what the question gives. Okay, so when you look here, um, the question gives you obviously the balance equation is already given to you. And then the question gives you the KP value, which is 6.9 at 400 degrees Celsius. So that is a very important piece of information. So the KP value is 6.9. Okay. And then what else? If you read down here, it gives you the pressure of Br2, Cl2, 0 0.34 atmospheric pressure and 0 0.51 atmospheric pressure respectively. This are the initial pressure for Cl2 and this one is the initial pressure for Br2. Note that they are the initial partial pressure. Therefore, we're going to fill this in later, these two values in here in the initial boxes. So I'm just going to write down all the information given. So question gives you the initial partial pressure for BR2 0 0.34 ACM and partial pressure for CL2 is 0 0.51 ATM. And question one you to find the equilibrium partial pressure for BRCL, which is your product. So they want to find the equilibrium partial pressure for BR BRCL. So in order for us to do this, we have to construct the ICE table. Okay, so this time you have to make sure that your ICE would be in ACM because we're dealing with pressure. Okay, so without identifying the what sort of things that we want to find over here, if you do not write the atmospheric pressure in brackets or concentration for the first question just now, you won't be able to get your mark for your ICE table. So be careful with that one. Usually students know how to do this, but due to these technical errors that students do, they lost quite a lot of marks. Um, if we go back here, these are the initial partial pressure, three 0 0.34 ATM for BR2. Okay, so I'm going to 0 0.34, this one 0 0.51, initial partial pressure. And initially, we do not have this one being produced yet, so you're going to put 0 0.00. For the change in pressure, okay, the change in pressure over here. So we're going to do the same thing that we have done for concentration just now. So we're going to look at the coefficient. So we have one mole of Br2 gas. 
and this one is your reactant. Hence, you're going to have negative sign in front to denote that it will be decreasing in pressure. And you're going to put X because you have one mole of Br2. We have one mole of Cl2 and Cl2 gas is also one of the reactants. So you're going to have negative in front of the X sign. And of course, this one, since the BRCL is your product, you're going to have positive sign in front to signify that it will be increasing in partial pressure. And 2x. Why do we write 2x over here? Because we have 2 mole of bromine chloride, BRCL gas, being produced when they achieve equilibrium it's quite easy okay and then what about the equilibrium what about at equilibrium at equilibrium for br2 you have 0 0.34 minus x okay so you have this minus this and we have 0 0.51 for chlorine gas minus x for BRCL gas, 0 0.00 plus 2x, you get 2x. So by writing this ICE table over here in full form, when you have all of the information correctly written and you have identified what sort of things you want to work out, either it's going to be atmospheric pressure or concentration, you should be able to get at least three marks just for constructing this ICE table. So, so that is the first thing we need to do. We have done that apart from doing the analysis that we have done over here, finding what the question gives, finding what the question wants. Essentially, this is the first thing you need to be doing. Therefore, Moving on to the second step, also like what we have done for concentration, we're going to write the Kp expression. By writing the Kp expression, you will be getting another one more. Remember, for concentration, it is not square brackets, but we're going to use round brackets, partial pressure of BRCL, close the brackets to the power of 2. Why do we have to the power of 2? Because you have 2 mole of BRCL right there. And then moving on to the other side of the equilibrium constant uh, co reaction, divide by the concentration of these two things multiplied together. You have partial pressure of Br2 to the power of 1 times partial pressure of Cl2 to the power of 1. Okay, so to the power of 1, to the power of 1, since you have 1 mole of Cl2 gas and 1 mole of Br2 gas in this balanced equilibrium reactions. So by having this written down, you will get 1 mark. And what you need to do now, you're going to look at your equilibrium line over here. We're going to plug in all of these values into your Kp expression. So when you do that, we do know that the value for Kp, the value for Kp over here is... 6.9, I'm just going to put 6.9 over there, equals to, so the one on top over here is the partial pressure at equilibrium. So we're going to put value at equilibrium for Kp, okay? So 2x, 2x to the power of 2. And we have 0 0.34 minus x times 0 
minus x. So you're going to get something like this. And then what we need to do, we're just going to be moving these expressions down here to the other side. And then we will be able to produce a quadratic expression. And from there, we would be able to work out two values of x. So you get something like this. So when you're going to move, um, when you expand this, okay, we're going to expand this one first. When you expand that one, you get something like 6.9 equals to 4x squared. So when we expand this, we have done this before. It's quite easy. You should be getting 1.0.0. 1734 minus 0.85x plus x square. Okay, so when you move everything this to the other side, when you move that to the other side, you should be getting something like 1.196 minus 5.865x plus 6.9x squared equals to 4x squared. So when we move 4x squared to the other side there, we get something like this. 2.9x squared minus 5.865x plus 1.196 equals to 0. We're going to take your calculator. You're going to plug in all the values for this quadratic expression. And you should be getting 2 value of x okay so x1 would be 0 0.230 and then the second x value would be 1.792 now when you look at the situation it's slightly different from what we have done in so when we look at the concentration example just now after we have figured out the two values of x it's quite easy for you to identify that this one will be rejected because you have a negative value and then when you try to substitute into the equilibrium value you would get a negative value and we don't accept that because it is not logical for you to have negative concentration however when we have a situation like this it's quite difficult for you to identify which one will be accepted at first glance so how do you do that so we're going to take both value what you should be doing try to substitute the values into these equilibrium values which one will be giving all positive value if one of them would be negative therefore you're going to rejects that x value so now the one that we will be rejecting is this one will be rejected okay this one is not accepted why? Because when you take this number, 1.792, and try to substitute into here and there, you would get a negative value for partial pressure. And that is not logical. We cannot have negative pressure. It's either no pressure 
or little pressure or huge pressure. Okay, so that's how you're going to identify which one is going to be the value that you want to reject and which one you want to accept. Okay, the reason why we not going to be accepting this one because when you substitute the value there, you would get negative values. So now we have identified the value of x that we want to use, which is 0 0.203. So what we do now, um, so we're going to go back to this part over here. But this time, you're going to take the value, okay, so we're going to take 0 0.230 and we're going to substitute into there. So at equilibrium, Partial pressure of Br2 minus x, okay? Partial pressure for um, Cl2 would be, and then partial pressure for the product 2x. So we're just going to be substituting x value with what we have got here 0 0.230 okay so you get 0 0.34 minus 0 0.230 then we get 0 0.11 ATM. Okay, for the other reactants, after they have reached equilibrium, 0 0.51 minus 0 0.230 equals to 0 0.28 ATM. And this one, 2 times 0 0.230, and you get 0 0.460. ATM. These are the partial pressure for all of the gases when they have reached equilibrium. Okay, so you get all 